Hello and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, thank you for stopping by. My name is Angoli. In today's video, I'll be discussing the cost of living in Scotland with a focus on Glasgow and Edinburgh as well as the local authorities around both cities. I have a cost of living video which I made back in 2022. However, things has significantly changed. The cost of things has changed since I made this video in 2022. Hence the need for me to make a new video which reflects the current cost of living in 2024. Just like the previous video, I'll be discussing food, accommodation, transportation, education, utility bills, as well as tax. Everything I'll be discussing in today's video is based on my experience of having lived in Scotland coming up to eight years now in March, as well as doing some research on the topic. For a family of four, the average weekly spend on food could be anywhere between £120 to £180, depending on what you buy. I have a family of three and my weekly spend on grocery when I go to the regular shops like Morrison and Asda, the weekly spend is typically around £120. And I tend to buy things like grains, fresh fruits and vegetables, pizza, bread, beef, chicken, and other smaller things. Aside from the regular shopping once a week at the general grocery stores, we also go shopping for African foodstuffs once a month, and we spend around a hundred pounds for this. I tend to buy things like few tubers of yam, like two or three, about five kilograms of ripe plantain, a box of ripe plantain chips, small two kilogram of beans, about 900 gram of tinned powder milk, a few packets of green plantain chips, then five kilograms of gari, which tend to last us about three months, and then bits and pieces depending on what I find in the shop. I never buy things like dried fish, meat like goat meat and any other frozen meat, and um, red oil, obono, ibusi, crayfish, you name it. I mean the core ingredients or the core African foodstuffs. I don't really buy the, I don't buy them from the African food store. I tend to source them directly from Nigeria. If I were to buy these core African food stores from the shop, then I would spend a lot more than hundred pounds in a month. Within Glasgow slash Edinburgh area for a two to three bedroom property, you'll be looking to spend anywhere between 750 pounds to well over 2000 pounds per month. How much you spend on rent is determined mostly by how nice the neighborhood you're looking to rent in is. And then a little bit of it also has to do with whether you're renting in the major city or renting in one of the smaller towns just outside of the cities. Both Edinburgh and Glasgow as well as all the other towns all have nice and not so nice neighborhoods. And the neighborhoods are typically ranked from 1 to 10 on what is called Scottish index of multiple deprivation, with one being the most deprived neighborhoods, while 10 is most affluent neighborhoods. Primary and secondary school education is completely free to all children in Scotland, irrespective of their immigration status. And it's free down to books and sometimes even writing materials are provided to those who don't have any at no cost. If you have a settled status or indefinite leave to remain and you have lived in Scotland for three years prior to the commencement of your studies, then university education will be tuition free to you. There is however a small tuition fee of about £1,820 which will be paid off by the Student Award Agency Scotland. So for example if an eligible student gains an admission all they have to do is apply to this SAAS and they would get this £1,820 tuition fee paid off on your behalf and you don't have to pay it back because it's not a loan. Other UK citizens who live outside of Scotland or even those who live in Scotland, even if you have settled status, you have ILR, if you haven't lived in Scotland for three years prior to the commencement of your studies, you would have to pay the home tuition fee, which is currently sitting at just under £10,000. For children between the ages of three and five, the government currently provides 1140 hours of funded early learning and child care otherwise known as nursery and this works out to be around 30 hours per week 10 times only because a lot of parents work full-time and it's only 30 hours that is provided per week 
and this is also only 10 times, a lot of parents end up paying for more hours out of their own pocket. To give an idea of the cost, a full day at a nursery, which is generally 10 hours, would cost around £62. And this would normally include snacks and also lunch. And then a half day, which is about five hours, would cost around £32. And it would also include snacks. Another cost that is also associated with education is after school clubs. And this is generally for primary school aged students because from secondary school, most kids can stay on their own or look after themselves when they come back home from school. But mostly for the primary school aged children, because schools close before four o'clock, you find that a lot of working parents who work full time would need their children to go somewhere after school whilst they are at work. So typically, a lot of parents will send their children to after school club. After school club will cost around £20 per day and they would pick your child up from the school and then take the child to their facilities where they would give them snacks and keep them engaged until around 6pm, which is when most of these facilities close for the day. Most bills are payable monthly, but you can also pay a lot of bills annually and then you save yourself quite a bit of money. Phone bill will depend on if you have a contract phone or a SIM only phone. For SIM only phone, which means you're only paying for airtime with about 15 pounds with most providers, you would be able to get things like unlimited messaging, unlimited calls, and then about 10 gigabytes of data. For the latest high-end iPhone and Android phones, you might be looking to pay anywhere between 40 and 70 pounds per month on a contract that it's for about 24 to 36 months. Heating and electricity will depend on the size of your home as well as your usage. For a three bedroom house with normal usage, you'll be looking to pay an average of 400 pounds per month. And I have said average because some months can be more and some would be less. So for example, in the summer months, because you don't turn on the heating quite as much, or even you rarely turn on the heatings, you find that your heating bills will be a lot less. And then also, because there is longer daylight during the summer period, then you don't also turn on the lights as much, which means your electricity bills will be also much less. And then the opposite would be the case in winter when the heating is on for most of the day and then also the day is shorter which means you have to turn on your lights for much of the day. Other optional bills depending on if you use them includes TV license if you have a TV and this is currently fixed for £159 per year. Then there is car insurance and you're looking to pay roughly around £400 for an average car and this is per year. Then there is also the road tax, which is quite a bit complicated. This has a lot to do with the emission of your car, like how old your car is and what it's rated when you go for MOT and things like that. But to give an example, you might be looking to pay anywhere from zero pounds to as well over £2,000. In my own case, I've got a small car, a small petrol car, which is four years old and it has about 17,000 mileage on it and I pay about just over £160 per year for my road tax. Then as for transportation, between now and July, the government is subsidizing the, the, the fare for trains. So what that means is that the train fares is currently halved. When the train fare subsidy ends for a 45 minutes car journey from a town that is outside of Glasgow, going into Glasgow. If you're to make this journey by train, you may be looking to pay close to £82 on a weekly ticket, £312 for a monthly ticket, and £3,244 for an annual ticket. For transportation by bus within Glasgow, a day bus pass with unlimited travel is sitting at about £7. You can also purchase a week-long ticket for just over £20 or a month-long ticket for £62. Just like my previous video, I feel it's important to also include tax in this cost of living video because we pay higher tax in Scotland compared to the other parts of the UK. And then also recently, the Scottish government has increased tax for those of us living in Scotland, which is not the case for those living in other parts of the United Kingdom. But then, like I said earlier, the university is tuition free, so I guess maybe we're getting our money's worth, I don't know. But here is the breakdown of the tax you can expect to pay if you are to live and work in Scotland. 
The first £12,571 is the personal allowance and this is untaxed. And then any amount from that up to £14,876 is taxed at 19%. Then up to £26,561 is taxed at 20%, between £26,562 to £43,662 will be taxed at 21%. And then if you earn from that up to £75,000, you'll be taxed at 42%. Between that and if you earn £125,140,000, you'll be taxed at 45%. And anything above that is taxed at 48%. It's not all of your income that is taxed at whatever tax bracket your income falls at. So what am I saying by this? So for example, if you earn £125,000 per annum, it is not the whole £125,000 that would be taxed at 48 percent because if this were the case then you have a situation whereby the more you earn the less you bring home but that's not the case so here is what actually happens the first 12,571 pounds would not be taxed which means this would have to be taken out of your income before they start taxing whatever is remaining then of whatever is remaining first 14,876 pounds will be taxed at 19 and then the next one that fall under the second bracket which is 20% will be taxed under 20% and then all the way to whatever falls under the 48% will be taxed at 48%. There is also national insurance which is taken out of your pay before the money gets paid into your account just like the normal tax and how much you pay is determined by how much you earn. Another tax which takes a sizable chunk out of your pay is the council tax and unlike the national insurance and the income tax this is not taken out of your pay so you have to pay this directly to your council. This council tax helps to fund things like waste disposal, water, maintenance of council facilities, etc. The amount you pay for council tax depends on the size of your property and you are looking to pay anywhere between £1,263 and just under £4,500. And you can choose to pay this yearly or you can split it into 10 monthly payments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in my next video.